Hi everyone and welcome to another video on Artbeast Video Tutorials. I'm Milad and in this video I'll do a brief overview of Master Key. That would be Jupyter Control Panel and Theme Options. Together we'll explore different sections of these two main areas and hopefully by the end of the video you'll have a better understanding of what you can do and how you can customize Jupyter settings based on your needs. So let's start with Jupyter Control Panel. To access the Control Panel from WordPress Dashboard go to Jupyter Control Panel. Here you can see that we've separated different options. For example, in the support tab you can find the quick links to the documentation, creating a support ticket or our community forum. In register product tab you can enter your API key to register the theme. You should know that registering the theme is required in order to access some of the other tabs in control panel. Note that we have another tutorial on how to register the theme. Ok, in Templates tab, you can search or browse through our vast number of templates and install them to have a starting point on building your website in a much faster way. In Required Plugins tab, you can install, activate, update and remove the bundled plugins of Jupyter. Again, we have already covered this tab in a separate video about plugins installation. In Image Sizes section, you can add your custom image sizes to use it inside the short codes when you're building your website. The icon library contains a complete list of icons that you can use throughout the theme. You can see the code for these icons to be used inside shortcodes. The system status section provides detailed information about your current installation environment, like server details or PHP and WordPress information. The information given in this section is crucial for our support staff if you want to get help from them. When you want to create a new support ticket, you can click on Get System Report and copy this information to Environment Details. In the Announcements section, you can see the latest important news from Artbeast. And Theme Updates tab is used for a simple way to update Jupyter when a new version is available. We've also covered different methods of updating the theme in a separate video tutorial. Ok, so that's Jupyter Control Panel. Now moving on to Theme Options. You can open Theme Options either by clicking the shortcut here or going to Jupyter, Theme Options. You can use Theme Options to change different aspects and settings of your website. These settings are organized by category to be found easier. So let's start with global settings. In site settings, you can toggle some general behaviors that are used throughout the whole site. For example, turning off this go to top toggle disables this arrow in front end. In logo and title section, you can upload different logos and favicons for your website. For example, you will see that when you're working with transparent headers, you can choose to display a dark version or a light version of your logo depending on the background image you select. And as you can see, it's possible to provide a different, maybe optimized version of the logo for mobile and sticky header as well. In Preloader section, you can turn on Preloader globally for your site and customize it with different colors and styles. The Preloader is basically one of these animated icons that gets displayed on your pages before they completely load. In Quick Contact, you can find different options about this contact form in front end. And inside API integrations, you can connect your site to different services, like Twitter, MailChimp, or Google Maps. You might have noticed that in most of the settings, there's a question mark icon next to it. If you click on these icons, you'll see a general description or guide about that option. For example, if we click here, you'll see a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up an API of Google Maps. Moving on to the next section, in Main Content tab, you can find different options for your site layout, like if you want your site to be displayed in full width of the browser or in boxed mode. There are other options like setting background colors and textures for different sections of the site, like main body or footer. In text section, it's possible to set different colors and text styles of body text and different headings. We'll cover setting the font type in a bit. In header section, you can select a header style for your site, or even extend it by defining a second menu to be displayed as full screen navigation or site dashboard. You can explore these options to see how they will look like on front end and which one matches your taste. Different hover styles for the header and adding your social media is also available in this section. In mobile header, you can specify different colors for the header in mobile view. In sticky header, it's possible to set the sticky header behavior. The sticky header is same as your main header but floats on your page and it's useful for long pages. In site dashboard, you can change the settings for the site dashboard header. You can see a demo of this header in our templates as well. And in full screen menu section, you find options like setting up which logo to show in full screen menu, or text size and stylings. Note that if you want to assign a menu to be used as site dashboard or full screen menu, you need to check its option in appearance menus when you create a menu. Ok, moving on to the next one. Header toolbar is the top section inside the header. It can display a tagline, email address, social network 
artwork icons and more. You can also change the stylings like the colors here as well. In page title settings, you can turn off page title for the whole site or change text color and styling. Note that this option is overridable in page and post settings. The breadcrumbs is also a part of page title section. This shows an example of displaying the breadcrumbs in the page. The options that we have here is to toggle it on or off for the whole site or changing the text skin. Okay, let's go to typography section now. Here you can find as many fonts as you want and apply them to different elements of your site. You can edit the default font family for your site or add a new one by clicking this plus icon, choosing a subcategory, and selecting your desired font. To make it more enjoyable when you're working with this section, we've made it possible to see the font previews when you hover over them. Once you found the one you like, you can click on this check mark and then configure which elements you want this font to be applied on. In footer tab, you can find different options about footer layout, like how many columns you want it to have, or option to hide it on mobile, or text stylings. If then you wanted to add content to the footer, you should go to appearance, widgets. Also, in subfooter section, you can set the copyright text and turn on a navigation menu in subfooter. In sidebar section, you can add sidebars to your site and activate them for custom post types. Once you added the sidebar, you can add content to it by going to Appearance, Widgets. In Search tab, you can change settings for the search result page of your site. In Blog, Blog Single Post, it's possible to choose a layout for the single posts or apply a unique style to them. Other options like turning off comments on blog posts or hiding the social media share is also available here. Changing the heading and body colors for blog posts is also another available option. Option. In blog meta, you can turn off meta options. So let's say we don't know what that is. We can simply click on this question mark icon and see that this option refers to displaying author, date, and category in single posts. In blog archive, you can specify a layout for your blog archive pages. Also, many styles are available in this section. The news section offers some options for news custom post type. Moving on to portfolio, again just like blog, you can find similar options for portfolio single post and archive. The shop section provides many options if you're using WooCommerce on your site. For example, you can turn your shop to a catalog. Some options are also available for single product pages. You should note that more customizable options about each of these sections are available in their shortcodes when adding them in Visual Composer. Okay, now let's talk about advanced section. In speed optimizations tab, you see a few options that help you improve your website speed. For example, lazy load works in a way that images on your website load on demand, meaning they only load when they're in viewport of the browser. Also, note that lazy load is available for many shortcodes individually as well. In post types, you can turn off custom post types that you don't need. In custom CSS and custom JS section, you can add your custom stylings and JavaScript code if you want to further customize your site. Exporting theme options work in a way that you can export your settings of theme options and import them later. You can copy this code and save it in a text file for later use. The history button allows you to go back to a previous version of your theme options settings. And finally, the Restore button loads the default theme options settings. You can also visit the glossary page in our knowledge base to learn about different terms used throughout the theme. So that's it for an overview of Jupyter Control Panel and theme options. Hopefully now you have a better perspective of how Jupyter works and how you can customize it to your taste. Have a nice time and enjoy working with Jupyter.